Exploiting the brain for fun and profit. I love the brain. I love how people think. I love what that means about how people actually do things. What causes people to do things? What's going on? So, right off the bat, there we go. Uh, what we're gonna, there we go. What we're gonna learn about, there we go, is how to make a clicker work. Okay, so we're gonna do learning, perception, memory, sleep exercise, and infotension. Yeah, that's a made up word. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to get somebody up there. Okay, everybody stand up. If you got a brain, stand up. Okay, why I'm having you stand up is because three o'clock is prime nap time. Three o'clock on the dot is the time your brain is ready to shut down. You have two hormones going on in your body that are fighting for each other. One says wake up, one says sleep. Right about three o'clock is when your sleep brain starts to win. Your sleep hormone starts to win. So we're going to kick that up a little bit. So everybody, there we go. Okay, run in place, let's go. Little exercise going here. Awake and alert, awake and alert. You gotta set up, you gotta hear ya. Awake and alert, awake and alert, awake and alert, awake and alert. Okay, now we're gonna do some punching. These, this is actually a reason to do this. These are power moves. Power moves help you, fear, help you feel good and help you actually pay attention. So, listen, pay attention, follow through. Listen, pay attention, follow through. Listen, pay attention, follow through. Okay. Okay, great. You guys can sit down. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, I'm priming you, by the way. The next thing is to read aloud. Okay, everybody with me? Here's my list. Enthusiastic, motivational, fascinating, enjoyable, fun, humorous, useful, beneficial, simple, profitable, valuable, easy. Okay. Last participation, rearrange the sentence. <laughs> okay, these are, these are really fun hacks that you can do for yourself as well. It gets your, it gets your brain going in the right Direction, okay, two truths. I have nine younger siblings. Yes, I'm gonna give you just a second to take that in. Yes, nine younger siblings. I also have an older brother and me. No twins, they're what, every two years. Same parents, yes, 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 yes. So, nine younger siblings. I have three kids of my own. Um, and there are two truths that I've learned so far. I haven't learned everything there is to know, but there are two things that I know. This clicker doesn't work. Everyone is the same. Everyone is different. Those are two truths that I know to be true. Everyone is the same, everyone is different. You can always find something to connect with someone on because we all have the same motivations in our lives. We all go after the same thing. How we do them and what we do make us unique. Okay, priming, that's what we were doing at the beginning. Okay, so there was a study, I love all these studies they did on people, mostly psychology students, Okay, so they primed them with words like old, gray, Florida. Yes, actually. And then they measured how long it took them to get to the elevator. It took them significantly longer 
to walk to the elevator when they had been primed for old. All these elderly terms that they had been reading about changed the way that they thought. This isn't even the interesting part, though. So they had done this with psychology students. OK. Does somebody want to go click the mouse, the button for me? Do we have somebody who can click a button? OK, because this isn't working. OK, so it's done on psychology students. You'll probably get there before I can click. There. OK. Did the priming influence you, they asked? You'd think psychology students would know this. They said, no, the priming didn't influence me. And then they told them, then why did you walk slower to the elevator? You know what their answer was? They made it up. Oh, my knees are bothering me. Oh, I was tired. Oh, you know, I was distracted thinking about something else. No, you were primed. But we don't want to say, I don't know. Why did that happen? I don't know. People don't want to say, I don't know. Next. There was, that's fine. That's all. People don't want to say, I don't know. Next. You can click again. OK. The brain makes things up. Your brain makes things up. Next. And we don't even realize it. Sometimes you have memories that you think are real memories, and they're not. There are, there are times when uh, there was a great story um, about a little boy. OK, he, he was a grown man at, at this time, and he could clearly recall a time when he was almost kidnapped. He was actually kidnapped and rescued by his nanny, and there was this, it was a huge emotional thing for him because it was really scary, and the police were involved. He even remembered the color of the police baton when he was three. He found out as an adult, his nanny made that whole thing up. It never happened, but he had it as a memory because our brains, he heard it, he heard it enough, and he assimilated that as his own memory, even though he had never, that had experience had never happened. Next. My little joke, at, my husband and I have this little joke. I'm always right, but I remember things wrong. So it, it's, a, it's just a fun thing, but it's very true. Because our, our memories can very easily trick us into believing something that never actually happened. The, next. OK, so next we get to memory. Next. OK, so rats. They're, they've done lots of, and lots and lots of studies on rats. So this one was really interesting. So many experiments have started because of some accident. So uh, some lab assistant forgot to take the little brain measuring device off the rat at night after they had run through a maze. And so they collect data all night long. And something they realized was partially, partially through the night, they could, the same brain patterns that happened while they were running the maze were happening while they were sleeping. So they thought, oh, this is interesting. Well, I wonder what this means. So uh, they took this rat and put him in a new maze, had him learn the maze. And then when he went to sleep, they woke him up. Any time that it started to, his brain wave started to match up, the next day, they put him in the maze, no idea. He had absolutely no idea how to run the maze. OK, next. So sleep is important. Sleep helps us transfer what we know into our long-term memory. Okay, without sleep, the rat had no idea what he had learned the day before. He had learned to go through that maze, but then he had no idea how to do it because he wasn't able to get to the sleep that inputted it into his memory banks. Next. OK, here, who here gets 10 hours of sleep? Oh, uh, a night. 10 hours of sleep. OK, nine. Who gets nine? OK, couple. Eight, at least eight. You can raise your hand if you had 10. You know, if you have any, at least eight or more, so we can kind of gauge the room. OK. 
Seven or more? Ooh, ooh, that's good, that's good. Pretty good there, pretty good. Okay, six. Good, good. Okay, anybody get five hours or less? Okay, I have three little kids. They're uh, four, two and a half, and 19 months. So uh, my youngest is teething right now. <laughs> she, she doesn't like to actually go to sleep. She tries to go to sleep, but then she wakes up. So sleep is fun right now. Uh, the a average person, though, they say 70% of people get less than eight hours of sleep. 40% get less than seven hours of sleep. Eight. That's a huge problem. Next. Okay, so another experiment. Experiments are awesome, especially when you do them on yourself. So there was a couple of people that decided uh, that they were going to test what happens when you stay up for days on end. So the first person started with nine hours, nine days, uh, and of course the next person had to up the ante and did 11. So uh, what, to see what happened. So after five days, they had symptoms that mimicked Alzheimer's. By, by 24 hours of no sleep, they were starting to hallucinate and have paranoia. There was 30% loss in cognitive function after just one day. Chronic sleep de deprivation, like less than two hours, so if you were supposed to get eight hours of sleep, those of you who only get six hours of sleep, that's like missing two days of sleep each week. So sleep also is a big factor in obesity because it makes us feel hungry. It also gets us crazing, cravings, and it also takes longer for us to feel full. Sounds like it's a pretty hard thing to overcome. So sleep is a great thing for that as well. Next. OK, the scary thing is they didn't feel impaired. So they're having hallucinations, waking dreams, but they didn't even realize they were impaired. That's the really scary thing that lack of sleep does to you. You don't realize you can't function at normal speed because everything is going slow. So because I'm walking like this, I can, yeah, I'm sure that I can dodge that ball. Yeah, uh-huh. Because the whole world is going at slow speed for you and you don't even realize it. Next, some people do need less sleep. Yes, there are people that have said, I don't need it, they've tested it. Yes, there is what they call an insomniac dream. There are those wonderful, exciting people in the world who only sleep for four hours a night and they're great. It's probably not you. Next. <laughs> probably not you. Next. Okay, so naps are a great thing. Naps improve performance. The Army figured out that a 26-minute nap increases performance by 34%. Just 26 minutes. Of course, we have Dilbert here. Dilbert's lots of fun. And have you ever done some of these things before? Oh, this is what you have to do. And then you've tried it? Yeah. I, I got up at 4 a.m. because I heard it's what we're supposed to do. Yeah? Uh-huh. Okay, next. Okay, when are you strongest? This is really the important part about sleep. When are you str strongest? There are morning larks, like my daughter, who wakes up like this. <laughs> And then the rest of my family. And there are night owls. And those, there's about one out of 10 are lar morning larks, and about two out of 10 are night owls. So, and it seems to be in the IT field that there's a little bit more night owls. Uh, there hasn't been any good evidence to that yet, but uh, if you work best at 3 a.m., do your hardest work at 3 a.m. If you don't know what your best time is yet, figure it out. It will help you immensely. Play to your strengths. Don't try to change it. Okay, next. Okay, so how do we learn? Next. Okay, forgetting stuff, this is a feature, not a bug. Okay. There, there are pe there's people who have um, photographic memories and where they like remember everything. The problem is there's so much going on in there, they can't use it very efficiently. 
So forgetting things is really a feature. But how do we use that in a good way? Next. OK. Elaborate, meaningful content. That's what you remember. OK, everybody, stand up. It's been, ten, it's been more than 10 minutes now. OK, again, you can only sit and listen to something for 10 minutes. So let's, let's try this again. Run in place. I'm awake. I'm awake. I'm alert. I'm awake. I'm alert. I don't hear you. I'm awake. I think you fell asleep. OK, one more. Ready? He, listen. I pay attention. I make results. Follow through, follow through. There we go. Listen, pay attention, follow through. Listen, pay attention, follow through. OK, good job. OK. So, so another, an, another thing, you really can only pay attention to something for about 10 minutes, which is really hard for lectures that are 50 minutes long, because your brain just doesn't really pay too much attention after that, unless there's something to engage it again. Next. OK, spaced repetition. This is important to learning because we forget things. There are certain things that we forget more, that we remember more. If certain things are harder to remember. We need to bring them up more often. Everybody does this a little bit differently. It's kind of a wacky science. But the good news is there are programs out there. The computer is a wonderful thing. There are apps out there that will help you learn what you need to learn at what pace you need to learn certain things that will bring up flashcards for remembrance when you need to remember it. So things that you've got down, it doesn't need to bring them up so often. Things that you haven't learned yet, needs to bring them up more often. There are apps for that. Next. OK. With spaced repetition, there was an increased knowledge and retention. Timing is key. Like I said, those apps will help. Um, information decay. Computers, again, can help with this. And here's one, the, yeah, that right there. Next. OK, exercise, like we were doing a little bit there. OK, that wasn't much exercise, but it really doesn't take much. Next. OK, so why you all have heard about exercise. Everybody knows this. Why am I telling you it again? Because we don't do it. Okay, so exercise improves blood flow. It clears waste from our brains. It improves performance. And it actually makes your brain bigger. If you want to improve your brain and make your brain bigger, exercise. Actually, smells are another great way. Uh, exercise for just 75 minutes a week is your biggest bang for the buck. After that, the crossover between, you know, minutes per how much does this actually help your health is decreased. It's still good for you, but it doesn't make such a huge difference. 75 minutes a week, that's really not that much. And you can split this up. You don't have to do it all at one time. So 75 minutes a week is a attainable goal. However you want to split that up, five, minute, five days a week, five minute increments, whatever you need to do, walk around the block after dinner, you can get the 75 minutes in. Huge improvement. Next. OK, here's some other ideas. They've actually done walking desks. How many of you have ever used a walking desk? We have a couple. OK, was it hard to learn? No, it, it seems kind of scary. How can I do, actually do something and walk at the same time? You're going really slow. It's not, it's not really difficult. But a walking desk is one. Another, that's, you know, you're probably not going to talk yourself or your boss into buying a treadmill and actually a nice walking desk. You could make, if you have a treadmill, you could set something up. There are plans online. But besides that, meetings are another great way. It, walking meetings, if you don't need to be sitting at a computer, walk. It will help you pay attention, it will help you retain information, and it will make you smarter. So Boeing and Mayo Clinic both have started implementing this because they've, because they've realized what a difference it really does make. Okay, next. Okay, so infotension. 
Managing the information overload. How many of you feel overloaded with the information out there? Okay, next. So we have bombarded with this new languages, new technologies, new approaches, new versions of WordPress every five minutes, it seems. Have to update plugins and templates and everything else every two hours. So books, articles, blogs, podcasts, Twitter, conferences. These are all great, wonderful ways to get more information. But how do we even process that? Next. OK, how do we keep up? Next. Attention is precious. Thank you for giving me yours right now. Next. Be selective. If you didn't like this talk, if you don't like it now, you can get up and go somewhere else because your attention is precious. Go do something useful. Next. Information diet. I would suggest this. It's selective ignorance. Next. Pick something that you care about deeply. Skim over the rest. Next. Use your friends. You don't have to be the expert. That's why friends are so wonderful. They can share with you their knowledge, and you can share with them your knowledge. So you don't have to learn everything yourself. Have a great network. My dad is awesome at this. He is one of those people, if you just go, this is, you just need to know one person, really, like this. And you just go, I'm looking for this. And he goes, oh, I know somebody who knows how to do that. So all you have to do is find that one person. Makes it really easy for you. You'll probably have to make friends with the person that they send you to, but to cut down on your time there, find that, find that person who knows people. OK, next. Prune aggressively. If you're not reading it, delete it. Unsubscribe. Does anybody actually get magazines in the mail anymore? Uh, I stopped that a long time ago because I just do not have time. Although I did just subscribe my son because he loves getting mail. He's four and he loves getting mail and he loves to read it. He'll read the magazines over and over again. It's great for him. Not so great for me. Because they'll say, I want to do it. I really, really, I, you know, I only subscribe to things I'm interested in. Like, I like knitting and I like crochet. Crochet is my favorite. So I, I subscribe to crochet magazines too. I want to do it. Do I ever get to actually do any of those pro patterns? Not really. So unsubscribe, magazines, mailing lists. If it's something, if you want to filter it, some people like to. I actually personally a lot of times filter stuff and just have it automatically go there so I can search for it later. Once, once my Gmail fills up, if that ever happens, I can delete that folder because it's not important. So if you either filter it somewhere that it's not important and it doesn't alert you and you can search for it if you want to so you don't feel bad, or just unsubscribe, unsubscribe, unsubscribe. OK, next. Utilize white space. OK, how many of you have times when you're waiting? You commute. Or maybe you exercise. This would be a great one. Or maybe you have waiting at a doctor's office or waiting to pick someone up. These are great times to read some of those lists. Get a good or listen to podcasts while you're riding or driving in a car. You can listen to podcasts or whatever on your commute. Find something that works. These white space times are a great way. Cleaning the house. You can listen to podcasts or a book on tape. These are great things that you can multitask, although we don't really multitask. But if you have two completely different things going on, something you're doing physically and something you're doing mentally, those both can work together. So you can use that. Next. OK, turn off the TV. I'm sure most of you don't do this. But next slide. Average 151 hours of TV a month. 200 billion hours annually in the US is spent watching TV. Talk about it, deficit. 200 billion hours, not minutes, hours. 
That's a lot of time. It's like 2,000 Wikipedias worth of time spent. People complain, how can you write Wikipedias and how can you be on doing those? 2,000 Wikipedias could be written in the time the US spends watching TV in one year. Okay, 100 million hours a weekend on advertising. Okay, so maybe you don't have that problem. Next, maybe it's Facebook. How many of you spend way too much time on Facebook? <laughs> or other social media? Twitter's getting there. But face Facebook is really easy to lose your time on. Okay, next. Distractions, which of course TV and Facebook can be. And I'm not saying don't ever watch TV or don't ever get on Facebook. I'm just suggesting, like, if you want to find in a little extra time to learn something new, ooh, I've really wanted to do this, take one hour out of your week of watching TV and use that towards something else. Start small. Okay, distractions next. We can't multitask. I did just give you an exception to that. There are a few things we can do. We can chew gum and walk, but try not to text and walk. That doesn't work so very well for a lot of people. Uh, definitely not driving, but walking is pretty bad too. So we cannot multitask. It just doesn't work. Next. It's called continuous partial attention. You cannot give anything your full attention. So if it's anything important, you can't be multitasking with it. If it's not important, then go ahead. Okay, I, you know, I'm cleaning my bathroom, I've got bleach, I'm wearing something that I don't care that I get bleached in so that I don't have to pay that much of attention, you know, whatever. If it's not exactly perfect, eh, that's okay. I can do something else while I'm cleaning my bathroom. If it's something I'm really trying to get right or learn how to do something, pay attention to um, a po uh, even sometimes a podcast, watching an informational video on something, probably shouldn't be doing it at the same time. But if you, see now you distracted me. See the distractions, distractions, okay. But if it's something that's not important, I like to crochet if I was watching TV, which I don't have, so I don't watch TV anymore. But when I was watching TV, I would crochet while I was doing it because I could get both things done. And it wasn't that important. Whatever was on TV was not that important. Next. Okay, interruptions kill flow. If you don't know this, then I really can't help you. Next. Email is like gambling. Okay, so the idea, next. Here. Oh wait, you, you could go back, because it was right there, sorry, I forgot. The variable, variable reward. So in gambling, it's not like a set time, you know, every, every 10 times you win, what, that wouldn't be gambling at all. The way fun would that be? It, you know, there's, there's nothing to that. The fun of gambling is you never know. It might be something exciting every five instead of every 200. And that's what we get with our email. We get a new email alert on our phone and go, ooh, ooh, it might be something good. And we look and say, oh, look, Viagra. <laughs> uh, you can set notifications and things like that. Next. So what can you do? Next. Turn off interruptions. Next. Inbox zero, if you haven't heard about it. It's a huge thing online. Internet is interesting, check it out. <laughs> Next, getting things done. Another thing that people have found really useful. And one of my favorites next is the Pomodori technique, which is agile. How many of you have heard of agile? It's a big buzzword now. Okay, the idea is doing small things, so that's this. Next, pick a task, timed work, break, repeat. Pick a task, time, work, repeat. Take a break, repeat. After four, you take a longer break. This is your reward. Make it something special. If you want to get up, maybe that's your chance to get on Facebook. After I've done four, I get to get on Facebook for a certain amount of time that I set a timer for. Next. Okay, external brain, next. 
We forget. Next. Computers don't forget. Next. Paper does not forget. Next. Elephants never forget. OK, next. Capture ideas to generate more ideas. When we get those ideas, put them on paper. You think you'll remember them? You won't. You will not remember them. You think you will, but you won't. Write them down. Okay, what you'll find out is that when you try to write something down, you go, oh, look, it was already in my notebook. Nice. Okay, you get more ideas flowing then. Write them down. Next. Wiki is a great tool for teams. If you're working on a team, instead of having your individual notebook, put things into Wiki. If you think, oh, I think I've done this before, write it down. Next. Final thoughts. Next. America's top killer isn't cancer or heart disease, nor is it smoking or obesity. It's our inability to make smart choices and overcome our own self-destructive behaviors. Ralph Kennedy at Duke University. Next. Choose one small thing to do and do it. That's the killer. We get overwhelmed with this information bombardment. We don't think we can do it. I can't exercise for a half an hour. That's way too much. Can you exercise for five minutes? Start there. I can't eat breakfast. Grab a piece of fruit. Do something. You know, you know what's important. You probably already have a list of things that you want to do. Make it smaller. Small, little chunks of things that you can do and you're not overwhelmed with. Just do it. Do something. Next, this is it. Resources. There are so many great resources out there. I love to read. There are lots of books on brains and how people work and learning and questions. and oh, It's just amazing. But next, books. Here's a few different books. If you're interested, slides will be available. That's why I like to put them on here for you. You don't have to read them all now. If you're taking notes, you could write it down. But you don't have to. OK. Next is some websites. There you go. And next. Here I am again. Back to me. This is me. This is how you can find me. I hope that you learned something and have something valuable to take away, which is do something. Any questions? <laughs> Question. Utilize white space. Utilize white space. That's um, your breaks in between things. So like if you're commuting, if you have a commuter, if you're waiting for picking something up at a doctor's office or something, smartphones are good for some things. It's nice to always have it there. I can, I I've really like reading books, but it's really convenient to have those e-books on my phone to read during my white spaces. So, yes. Other questions? Yes. My favorite apps. Um, there's a habit bowl if you're trying to do a habit. That's a pretty nice one out there for that. Um, I, there, on my computer, I have a, t it's called Timeout. I have a Mac and it's called Timeout. This is amazing for me because I don't, I need a timer because I won't stop. I get in the middle of something and it, you know, I'm not going to stop every 25 minutes. That's just ridiculous. So I have this thing on my app that pops up. It's called Timer. Um, out, time out, time out. It's called time out, and it's like it got a yoga pose on it, and it's really awesome. You can set your intervals however you want. You know, at 25 minutes, I take a five minute break. At the hour, I take a 10 minute break. You can set it however you want, and it's really great. You can snooze if you're in the middle of something, it does allow you to snooze that break. So that's a great one. And get up and stretch. Stretching is awesome. Okay, any other questions? Okay, well thank you very much for giving me your attention.